So you're planning a trip to Japan and you're already super confused about using the trains. We know how you feel. We've been there twice and it can get really confusing. Yeah, the train system in Japan is somewhat complicated. So in this video, we are going to answer all your burning questions and we're going to break down everything you need to know about using the trains in Japan. And we have tons more resources in the description below, so head there now. And if you could pretty please subscribe while you're there, we would love that. So without any further ado, let's get started. When planning your trip to Japan, it can be overwhelming trying to figure out how to get around. Yeah, this country is small but packed with so much to do and so much to see. And unarguably, the best way to get around this country is by train. The trains are super efficient and they are so well connected that for most itineraries, you'll be able to get everywhere you want by train and a couple buses and metros here and there. For the majority of people, the most affordable way to get around Japan is to get the Japan Rail Pass. So the Japan Rail Pass is basically like a package deal of sorts. It allows you to get on any of the trains, even the super fast bullet trains, for free. But, I mean, you have to buy the pass first. The Japan Rail Pass is available in 7-day, 14-day, and 21-day packages. So depending on how long you're, you're traveling in Japan, you have different options for your Japan Rail Pass. We've crunched the numbers and basically, if you're traveling to more than two or three cities, the Japan Rail Pass really is going to be the most affordable option because each train journey itself is pretty expensive. And after taking just a few inner city journeys, the Japan Rail Pass will actually pay for itself. It's even cheaper to get the seven day Japan Rail Pass than to do a round trip from Tokyo to Kyoto. Another great thing about the pass is that you can have it shipped to you in your home country before your trip. Free of charge. We were actually living in Bali before our trip to Japan and we had our pass FedEx to our apartment. It makes it so much easier when you arrive in Japan with your pass in hand. We are about to take a train to Osaka. We've got our J-Rail passes, we've got our seats reserved, and we're gonna show you how to walk through the station and get on the Shinkansen train. Are you ready? I got to. All right, we're heading to platform two to Osaka. On your ticket, you'll see that we are in car six and seat three C. Actually, on the ground, they have markers of where car six will be. Now we just have to wait. And in order to leave, we need to present our JRL passes and our tickets to the attendant in order to get out to exit. And we're out. One major question people might have while traveling in Japan is knowing whether or not you need to reserve your seat on the train. The answer to that actually depends on which type of train you're taking. With the JR Pass, there's two major, major types of trains. There's the Shinkansen, or the bullet trains, and also regional trains that kind of are similar to a metro inside. The regional trains, you don't need a reservation. You just show your pass as you walk through the gate and you can get right on that train. No reservations needed. But for the Shinkansen, it is recommended that you reserve your seat at least a day in advance. Sometimes even longer in advance is a good idea, especially during peak season or on busy routes. Now, if for some reason you forget to make your reservation or the, the seats are all full, you can get on that train. There is some hope for you. Most Shinkansen trains do have non-reserved cars in case you're unable to make a reservation. But you want to get to the platform early because those cars typically get really busy. We actually stood 
for about two hours on a train between Hiroshima and Osaka because we had no reservations. So if you are going the non-reserved route, be sure to get to the station well in advance so you can hopefully, fingers crossed, get a seat. You can follow signs at the station to that particular platform and that car. All signage is in Japanese and English, as well as the speaker, you can hear them speak in Japanese and English. So we're reserved in these seats too late, and we might have to be standing on this train. This is what happens when you don't reserve your seats far enough in advance. Gotta stand. So this is the Japan official tourism map. You'll go to the route, and this will help you search for your JR Pass trains that you can get on. Let's go from Osaka to Tokyo. And you can adjust the time that you're leaving in a few days ahead of time or a different time, but or you can select the current time. From Osaka to Tokyo. This is the results page and I'll show you which which routes include the JR Pass. This route is from Osaka to Shinosaka and then on to Tokyo. This first leg of the leg of the journey you are taking a regional line where you do not need to reserve your seat. The second leg of the journey is from Osaka to Tokyo where you can reserve your seat on a Shinkansen bullet train. And you can tell that it's a Shinkansen by the symbol and that it has a reserved seat area. This one, the first leg, is not reservable and is a local regional line. And you can tell by the little black train symbol here. Most stations have lockers where you can store your bags. We're at the metro station and we are trying to get back to our hotel. So first, we looked on Google Maps to find the station nearest our hotel. And now, I'm going to use the Japan official travel app from the current position to Aka, Akasaka. That is the station nearest our hotel. Leaving now, and I'm going to search. And it looks like one of them is with the JR Pass. Um, but that takes 36 minutes, which is quite a bit longer than just using the Metro. So we're going to go with the Metro this time. And it looks like we just have to take the Metro from Tokyo Station to Akasaka. And if you click right here, you can see how many stops there are. So it looks like I've got one, two, three, and we'll get off on the fourth stop. I can even look right here and it says M13 is where I'm gonna get off. So the J-Rail Pass covers a lot, but it doesn't cover everything within the city. So for instance, the one for Osaka is the ICOCA card, the ICOCA. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but you can use this card when you're traveling in the metro. I'm gonna show you how to get it out of the vending machine. So out of the ticket machine, you can click English, and then find the ICOCA card. And then down at the bottom is the ICOCA card. And you can start out by doing 2,000 yen with a 500 yen deposit. You will be able to get refunded anything that you don't use, so don't worry about about not about adding too much money. Yeah. And 2,000 is about 20 US dollars. And then you just have to insert 2,000 yen. Sometimes the exits will spit you out a half kilometer from where you really want to be. 
so with the major attractions there's usually signs that point you in the right direction to the correct exit but if you're going to your hotel or trying to find a restaurant or neighborhood to explore you might have to do a little google research um, to see which exit is the best to 